Hello and what is up guys, right here and welcome back to some more automation and of course BeamNG Drive. So a while back I decided to create the heaviest car possible in automation and it turned out to be, well, pretty gosh darn heavy uh, using a truck limousine body. The thing weighed about 150,000 pounds, which fun fact is about 12 million grapes. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm weighing the car in grapes, but I decided to weigh the car in grapes. So anyways, today we're going to be doing the exact opposite and building the lightest car possible in automation. It still has to function in BeamNG Drive though. Uh, I have made cars that are actually lighter, but they just explode in BeamNG. This is the lightest possible car currently that functions perfectly fine in Beam and G Drive that we're building in automation. So let's design the vehicle. Um, one thing you guys are going to notice pretty quick is this thing is lighter than your traditional, you know, Mazda Miata or maybe a Caterham or maybe another super light race car. This is going to be lighter than all of those things. This thing is going to be around 500 pounds or less. A very light car indeed. And the body that we're actually using is absolutely hilarious. It, you can't tell from the picture too much, but I'm pretty sure this is a like a Chinese Alibaba style little EV car body, which is just absolutely disgusting, and I love it. Uh, let's go ahead and design this thing. So there is no budget limits. This is just a feat of engineering in itself. It's going to be as light as possible while still functioning in BeamNG. So if we actually went for rear longitudinal engine, it would be a lighter vehicle. If we can go rear engine and McPherson struts front and rear, we actually would be lighter. But we're going for front mounted transverse solid axles in the front and in the rear. Now the reason being is uh, if you go with a McPherson struts or double wishbone etc in BeamNG on super light cars uh, with weird suspension setups, they tend to, to just explode. So we're going with a solid axle system which doesn't explode. Uh, I'm not too sure why I think BeamNG just doesn't like light cars. Uh, and by light, I mean very light. Like with um, rear engine cars and mid engine cars in other bodies, in the mod bodies for the game, I have gotten the vehicle down to 250 or so pounds. So we're going to be a little heavier than that at 500 pounds is the budget here. So solid axles plus 15 quality. Let's go ahead and design a new engine for this very, very heavy vehicle. It's gonna be an inline three uh, push rod magnesium ALSI. It's gonna be the year 2020, not 2012. Make sure it's all 2020. That'll be a little bit lighter. Thank you very much. So let's go ahead here and make it the smallest possible size. So it, it is 294.5 cc's. That's a pretty light, it's a pretty decently light engine, I feel like. Uh, it's gonna be quite small VVT. We don't want that, adds weight. Let's give it a pretty high compression ratio, 12 to one. Very, very high camp profile. The lightest uh, fuel system I've found so far was multi-point EFI. I think it was per cylinder, but we'll double check in a second here. Uh, race intake, ultimate of fuel, because actually we don't really matter. This is not a street car. It's just a, this is just the best of. This is just the best possible car, basically. Tiny, tiny exhaust. Highest quality though. Make sure everything's plus 15 if we can have it. And increase the rev limiter to about 10,000 RPM for now. So it's a pretty high revving car, I feel like. Plus 15 quality, 100 cam profile. We can go ahead and lower the RPM down to like 90, 9,000. 9,000 seems fine. Then increase the fuel as much as we can give it before it just starts absolutely drowning in fuel. So we can actually go for... So the lightest would be long tube exhaust. Race exhaust is a little bit, a little bit lighter. We'll go for long tube exhaust, not instead of race. The race is heavier. Um, we save a bit of money as well. That's totally fine for now. Let's go ahead and choose the body. So you, you see what I mean? This looks like like this car. Um, I think Jalopnik did an article on this exact car like a long time ago. I actually considered buying a really cheap Chinese EV car uh, during a, I think it was a live stream. I just did a live stream. Just or no, I did a, I did a live stream checking out Alibaba cars. And honestly, I'm still really tempted to buy one. So we're gonna go ahead. Uh, plus 15 on the body quality for now. It's gonna be front wheel drive with a four speed and a very low top speed. Electric LSD because honestly, it, it just doesn't matter. We'll just include this anyways. We'll go for the smallest tires possible. We'll just go for 85s, not 70s. Make the tire diameter smaller. You know what? That feels like it might be too small. It's, it's going to be functional enough in BeamNG. Uh, carbon fiber wheels though, plus 15 quality. And tiny, tiny, tiny carbon ceramic brakes. Uh, let's go ahead and increase the quality as well. No under tray, max quality, lowest airflow possible because that just gives us better fuel economy. Uh, I'm not sure why that matters, but it's gonna matter, okay? Let's go ahead, increase the quality of our interior to plus 15. No power steering, no traction aids, no safety, minus, fi uh, minus 15 quality on the safety, and this doesn't really matter for the uh, 
the steering traction aids quality slider. We can go for just, just the basic basic here. We'll go to no sway bars, because that saves weight, increase the quality. We can go for semi-active dampers, doesn't add weight. Uh, and I think progressive is the same weight as well. So progressive, semi-active, passive sway bars, because it adds... That doesn't add some weight, actually, just affects your stats a little bit, because we don't have any sway bars in general. But right now, the car costs $4.2 million, quite a reasonable sum of money. Gets 8 safety, again, pretty pretty reasonable so far. Zero comfort, yeah, that, that about does it. Uh, but the weight is... is pretty light it, it, it's 453 pounds um and it, it definitely it, it looks like it weighs it, it's yeah it looks terrible that's okay uh what is our acceleration here zero to 60 never it can never do 60 top speed is 99 kilometers an hour uh hopefully i'll get this thing under 400 i think we can uh for example if we just on this body go to um like min engine mcpherson struts doesn't fit okay if we go to just mcpherson struts with the current engine we can get it down to 400 and 35 or so pounds. That's quite a bit lighter just by changing the suspension because coils are heavier and leaps are even heavier than that. So let's go for coils in the front and the rear. Solid axles in a tiny car. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's what it's going to be. That's that's fine. It's fine. Let's go a little bigger than the tires. Even though it adds weight, it looks pretty cool. Um, let's make this thing as low as we can. The chassis. Oh, God. Oh, everything looks so weird. That's not good. Okay. I think the basics are pretty much done for this crazy light car. Uh, it's, again, it's it's pretty light. Power to weight ratio is actually pretty goddamn incredible. Um, what we're going to do is design this car. I'm going to make it look like just some ugly, cheap Chinese EV. Probably. We'll give it maybe a basic interior. Maybe. We'll see. Um, then we'll go ahead and beam in G, and we're going to drive this thing and see how it drives. How does a super light car drive? Well, we're going to find out. Uh, sit back, relax, guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. We are finally starting the build for my very, very compact, very, very light, tiny, sort of Chinese style uh, gas-powered vehicle, I guess. What we're doing at the beginning is starting off with shaping our front end, including the headlights, the grille, and the rest of the front fascia. I started off with a bit more of a Lexus-style grille, but I changed to a Honda E-style front end, because I think this car is pretty cute, and I think a cutesy little front end will help it out as well. Adding a bunch of random fixtures, or seemingly random fixtures here and there, um, but this is similar to another car that I've actually worked on recently. I'll include a picture down below. Um, similar to my Ford uh, Maverick competitor, my new Ford Maverick competitor, having a push bar in front, a little bit of an off-road rugged appearance, uh, separated turn signals, and adding these uh, sort of black trim pieces on the doors, because you know what, we gotta protect ourselves from door dings, and that's one way to go about that. Adding a single windshield wiper, because this thing is still a street legal vehicle, and you gotta have that. One big antenna, even though this car has no radio whatsoever, you still need that large antenna, because style, I guess, adding some very similar taillights as the headlights, uh, adding a back bumper, and we're adding two spare tires. Uh, yes, tires, not wheels, spare tires. You, all you get is tires, you get nothing else besides the tires. Adding a indentation in the rear with our license plate and the door handle, a gas cap in front, and now making the thing uh, a little bit wider, uh, adding a spoiler on the top, um, and then adding a few things like a light to the back spoiler as well. This car's got to have extra lighting. This is a, you know, a 2020 vehicle after all. It's got to have that extra cool lighting. Adding a, uh, a roof that I'll explain later on to the top why I have that roof uh, the way it is. Uh, adding a floor in the bottom of our squeezy McG vehicle. Adding these covered fenders because this car, it doesn't actually need fender wells. Um, because it doesn't really matter. The ride clearance is obviously already so amazing. We have sort of fake... Uh, wheel wells in this car, massive fender flare lookalikes on the front anyways, adding a enclosed bottom piece because this car really is just like a, a golf cart with a with a ga big gas engine or bigger gas engine and basically adding a massive bench seat in the middle. We have changed the tire size a little bit now, uh, adding a dash, uh, tweaking the name a little bit, adding a bus like steering wheel mounted so high up, a shifter on the dash and then adding a the pedals uh, right in the middle down below. Of course this car is a single seater, uh, it's the center driving vehicle, adding our rear kind of shelving in the back making sure it's all pretty legit and hunky-dory, adding an S for squeeze in the front, and changing the color, etc. And in front of us is the 2020 Squeeze-E McG.
so like I said guys, this is the Squeeze E McG. I, I, I'm not sure why I called it that, but you know what, this car is pretty goofy looking, and I decided let's go with a goofy name. Now, it's not the lightest physically possible, because it's got slightly larger wheels and a, a few, you know, odds and ends for basically just larger wheels actually, um, but it is still incredibly light, 490 pounds, which is lighter than my 500 pound target. Um, 29 horsepower, which is a pretty good power to weight ratio. I feel like it's actually very good power to weight ratio. We could actually lower the weight down a little bit if we decrease the very capacity, uh, to 202 cc instead of 290. But then again, we only lose 1.2 horsepower. Now, I, I know this video is the lightest car possible, um, but I kind of don't want to lose... 10 horsepower or so, um, because the extra 10 horsepower does help out a lot in this car. It's actually very, very, very brisk acceleration for the time. Let's go over the actual design of the vehicle really quick. Hop into Beam and G and drive the heck out of the Squeezy McG because it's so bad at Beam and G, but it's so good. Okay, so, right end, we've got these very cutesy, uh, dual headlamps with we have separated turn signals underneath. We got this separate DRLs, which actually, I, I guess, could be the turn signals instead of just the DRLs, but I think they look cool just on their own. The turret signals are actually down underneath there, which looks pretty cool. And the headlights are just right there. So we have all the headlights, all the lights work and function nice and good there. The taillights are just my DRLs that I just turn on there. I feel like this car, again, um, is the same car that Jalopnik, I think they bought it uh, a, quite a while ago. I posted pictures on the screen again, but I think it's similar to that car in the sense that it's like the same body, just a short wheelbase version of that. Very, very high riding, cheap Chinese little gas car or uh, electric vehicle, you can get them in as well. We've got our our fuel tank up in the top there, next to the, the, the frunk of the car. I'm not sure why it's there, but I'm guessing this thing is gravity-fed, probably. Um, we got the S badge in the front for Squeezy. Continuing on the side, we got these basic four-lug wheels, which is pretty fancy. We got a single-seat bench seat in the front middle. I'm not too sure why, to be honest, but it's got that. Uh, it's got this, the shifter sticking out of the dash, again, because why not at this point? Uh, and a, a center steering wheel, yeah, because, you know, it's it's cool. You know, the Squeeze McG is a very cool little compact car, uh, very compact car. The roof, um, I'm imagining it being, like, some soft plastic roof that you'd have on, like, boats or, like, just, like, a, just like or, like, a Jeep or something, like a soft plastic window that you can sort of just move and open easily because this car doesn't need a real roof, to be honest. We got a single light hanging off the back there, and it works again. It works again. It's, 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 a, it's a tail light, a single just sort of disco ball hanging off there. We've got spare tires. No spare wheels, you just get two spare tires because the wheels were extra. I don't even think the tires are the right size, but <laughs> that's, that's okay. And that's uh, pretty much the Squeezy McG. We got a, a, a wing kind of thing right there, but the weight. So the real question that I feel like people are going to have is, Rye, it weighs 490 pounds. Now, how much is that in grapes? Well, we broke it down for you. So 490 pounds is equivalent to around 32,500 grapes. So it's considerably less grapes than my 150,000 pound or 12 million or so grape limousine that I made in the past. I, and it's a very reasonable amount of grapes. You know what? 32,500 grapes. That seems like a fair trade for this thing. Revs to 8,000 RPM. It's very, very, very tippy and likes to roll over, but it's just... It brings a lot of character. So what we're going to do is hop into Beam and G Drive, see how this thing drives, uh, see the kind of tricks this thing can do, because it can do some pretty cool tricks. I'll see you guys in Beam and G Drive in just a sec. So finally, we're in Beam and G Drive with the Squeezy McG, and it looks pretty dang good in Beam and G, actually. If we just sort of zoom out here, it looks like a half-decent little vehicle. Like, it's... It's, it's much better than you might expect. Um, it's driving ha and handling characteristics are just significantly worse than you might expect, though. Um, you might think they're bad, but boy, oh boy, are they bad. Um, so the interior looks, you know, it's got everything you need. It's got pedals, it's got a, a shifter, it's got nothing else besides. It got vents. I mean, AC is not in this car at all, but y you got vents. You, you got that. So let's go ahead. Give her a bit of a quick drive here. So it likes to spin. Even with its electric uh, limited slip differential, it likes to spin into third gear. Uh, pretty, it's it's very quick to 60, kilo, to 60 uh, kilometers an hour. It's actually pretty quick. It's actually very slow, but it feels quite quick because this thing is so tiny. But yeah, after that, it does not like to go really at all. If we just... No, that's... that's It's meant to do that. that that's a feature. Uh, actually, the real feature is this car always lands wheel side up if it's on its roof. Somehow, it, it just never doesn't land wheel set up ever. If we just like go ahead and restart that, I even and <laughs> just drive it, spinning through first, second, and third here, and brake it like right now. It'll roll <laughs> and keep going. <laughs> what is this car? It, it's a little bit um, 
top heavy. We'll say that to be honest. It's a little top heavy, but it it functions pretty well. Like the lights work, they kind of glitch up, but they work. If we just do a quick uh. Oh boy, that's not good. Okay, it doesn't work that well. It doesn't work that well. We go a little slower. It'll drive kind of okay. We're spinning through first here. The gearing's so short. Stay in third here. Just go for another cruise. Now, we should do a quarter mile test just to see what I can do in the quarter mile, to be honest. Because I think it'll be very, very interesting to see. Uh, but we're just going for a bit of a drive still. It's kind of a good cruiser. Cruising in fourth here, though. We can't even get to, like normal speeds without having crazy revs because this thing is just terrible in every way but it looks pretty cool we're still going to that 60 kilometer an hour 100 kilometer an hour mark. we're never gonna hit that to be honest maybe downhill can we hit 100 kilometers an hour downhill probably like imagine cruising highway speeds like this what's the floor it's not even highway speeds yet we're still going see it handles pretty good and at higher speeds it's better because it just it just slides. It just it can't physically turn at all. But get a bit of wheel spin there. That limited slip differential really not helping us at all. It doesn't like off-roading either. No, no. So let's do a drag race. We're gonna go back to the West Coast USA uh, drag time trial. So we're in the drag strip. We're to the launch ship. Just just drop in first. Look at that power graph. It's so flat. It's about 7 seconds to get to 70 kilometers an hour. That's pretty brisk acceleration. If the thing was all-wheel drive, it'd be pretty quick. So about 90 kilometers an hour in the quarter mile. It's about 45. Uh, or about 55 miles an hour or so. 22 seconds of the quarter mile. It's probably my worst time of any car I've ever made in Beam and G and Automation. But I feel like that's probably reasonable. We're going to hop into a track test with this thing. Then we're going to do the jump arena uh, and see how this thing jumps and handles on a track. So we're in Hirochi Raceway. This is the short race circuit. we got our blue piping on the seat. Looking fantastic AF. The roof, it's not having its best day. Not going to lie. Uh, this is the short circuit, like I said, we're going to go for just a quick race around here. Now, normally, this thing should take just over a minute. Let's actually restart. Let's actually go ahead and get rid of that. Let's just have nothing there instead. I don't want to see the power graph. Come on. Just a burnt-up machine spinning to third gear. None to fourth. No, fourth is just depressing. Go back to third again. Let's go to... Let's just do this camera, I guess. This camera is so bad for this track. That looks kind of cool. Let's go to first person. It's so slow. Like, the acceleration feels much quicker than it actually is, up to uh, 60 or 70 kilometers an hour, but it's actually pretty bad still. Now, I can't really tell if we're leaning over in this camera angle view, but uh, I think this car is so bad and so loud, too. Yep, just started spinning. Yep, this is fine. This is fine. We're already at 46 seconds, not off to a great start. Oh, jeez, we can't take the turn. I think we're damaged because we're not really doing that good right now, but we're okay. A minute five. Now, if we can beat two minutes, two minutes is, is pretty, is in a doable lap time for two laps of this track. If we can beat two minutes, I'll be very happy. I think we're gonna be two minutes, no problem, but. The other fastest car in the books. Okay, we're not making this turn at all. You really have to let off the throttle for the back end to slide out. Yeah, that's kind of dangerous with this car, to be honest. The sound is making her just so bad. Oh, this camera's not helping out at all. Oh god, this camera, why? Are we in the track or not? Okay, we're in the track. Not really, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, we missed the cone, we're good. And for a bit of a cinematic final shot. Okay. I don't know how we stop like that, but we take those anyways. So 151, and we're landing nice and gently. 151 on the Hirochi Shore Raceway, which somehow is probably not my worst time ever, actually. It seems kind of reasonable. Uh, we're going to hop and do a jump arena uh, and just finish off with that. I'll see you guys in the jump arena in just, you know, 
I really don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Like, this car is just terrible in most regards, but it looks actually kind of cool. I actually give it that. It looks kind of cool. The wide body's kind of mean. We're going to go into this cinematic kind of camera and just do a bit of a burnout and finish off and see how fast we can go 0 to 60 in this thing. I should just go with do another camera because it's probably a good idea. Like this. It's probably fine, I guess. Can we do 60? Look at that, 11, 11.2 seconds, 11.7 seconds, that's pretty quick, that's like Honda fit 0 to 60 probably, we're actually over top speed here. I, I, I can't tell what's happening. Come on, how close are we? And go for cinematic shot. <laughs> Look at that go. Holy shit. This is gonna be a record for how much times it can spin down the track. This thing is just a wagon wheel, I love it. Oh my god. How is it still going? And watch, it's gonna drive perfectly fine after this. You watch, you watch! Come on. Please just stop. Okay, it's not gonna drive perfectly fine. Oh god, there's so much wrong with it. Oh Jesus. Oh uh, yes. Car. This is a great car, does it still drive? No! The engine is destroyed! No, that's the engine! That's the engine, I think. What is this? This is bad. I don't even know. Is it the suspension? I can't tell. Before we finish off, I just want to give a quick shout out to our Quad Turbo members. Thank you so much to Ruben, DD Man, Childish Shin, and Jay. Uh, thank you guys for your support. And thank you to everyone who has been a member on the channel, who has donated to a live stream, etc. You guys mean the absolute world to me. Everyone does. Uh, and without your guys' support, I wouldn't be here today. If you guys want to join the Discord, link is in the description down below. I am on there literally all the time. I do do builds in there, etc. If you guys want to hang out, join the Discord, link in the description. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want to do some more stuff, or want me to do some more stuff anyways, let me know in the comments down below. It does mean a lot, and I do read all the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time.